Welcome to the scientific world. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon for more updates and thrilling short scenes. The silence was the first sign something was wrong, the usual hum of activity was replaced by an eerie stillness. On a Tuesday morning in October 2024, the usual roar of a German car plant near Stuttgart faded to nothing. The factory, usually a hive of activity, was now a ghost town. Workers stood by halted assembly lines, confusion and anxiety in the air. They exchanged worried glances, unsure of what had caused the sudden stop. A critical shipment of microchips, vital for everything from power steering to airbags, hadn't arrived. These tiny components, often overlooked, were now the center of a massive disruption. This wasn't an isolated glitch. The ripple effects were felt far and wide. From Detroit to Toyota City, factories stalled, sending shockwaves through the global auto industry. Production lines that had run smoothly for years were now at a standstill. Stock markets tumbled as automakers' shares plunged, investors panicked, and the financial world was thrown into disarray. The cause, not a natural disaster or strike, but a geopolitical clash between the Netherlands and China over a single company. This conflict had far-reaching consequences. Suddenly, the abstract risks of global supply chains became painfully real. The interconnectedness that once fueled growth now exposed vulnerabilities. Empty dealerships and furloughed workers proved that decisions made in The Hague could devastate families worldwide. The human cost of this disruption was immense. The world was forced to confront just how fragile and interconnected our modern economy truly is. Industries that seemed robust were now revealed to be delicate. The question on everyone's mind, how did we get here, and how do we get out? The search for answers had just begun, and the solutions were far from clear. To truly grasp the scale of the crisis, it's essential to understand the hidden world of semiconductors and rare earth elements, two pillars that quietly support our modern lives, yet rarely make headlines until something goes wrong. Semiconductors, often simply called chip, are the brains behind almost every electronic device you use. They power the computers in your car, the processor in your smartphone, and the life-saving equipment in hospitals. Without them, the digital world as we know it would grind to a halt. While the media often spotlights the latest, most advanced chips, the real backbone of global industry is made up of so-called legacy chips. These aren't flashy, but they're reliable, affordable, and absolutely essential for the millions of everyday products that keep society running, from washing machines to traffic lights. Nexperia, the company at the center of this unfolding drama, specializes in producing these foundational chips, particularly for the automotive sector. Their products are found in nearly every car on the road, quietly ensuring safety and performance. But if chips are the brains, rare earth elements are the vitamins and minerals, 17 metals with unique magnetic, luminescent, and electrochemical properties. They're critical for everything from the powerful motors and electric vehicles to the vibrant displays on your smartphone and even the guidance systems and missiles. The issue isn't that these elements are rare in nature, they're actually found all over the world. The real problem is dependence. China has built a near monopoly on mining and processing rare earths, controlling the vast majority of global supply. This dominance gives Beijing enormous leverage over the world's manufacturing sector, allowing it to influence the flow of critical materials that underpin entire industries. By controlling these resources, China holds a choke point on the production of everything from advanced fighter jets to the latest iPhones, and even the most basic household appliances. The world's reliance on a single supplier for such vital components created a fragile, interconnected supply chain, one that was vulnerable to disruption and political maneuvering. As tensions rose, the crisis would soon reveal just how much control over these obscure resources could be wielded as real geopolitical power, affecting economies and governments worldwide. The world's economic engine, it turned out, was built on a surprisingly fragile foundation, one that could crack under pressure, sending shockwaves through every industry. When that foundation finally did crack, the consequences were immediate and far-reaching. Empty store shelves, stalled assembly lines, and a scramble for solutions. The stage was set for a global showdown, one that would test the resilience of nations, industries, and the very systems we depend on every day. The flashpoint came in late September 2024 in The Hague. The Dutch government stunned the world by seizing Nexperia, a major chipmaker owned by China's Wingtech. Invoking a Cold War-era law, officials cited threats to Dutch and European security. Western intelligence had warned about Wingtech's ties to the Chinese state and the risk of technology transfer. The US had already blacklisted Wingtech, 
For the Dutch, Nexperia was a strategic asset, vital to Europe's tech sovereignty. The move was bold, but risky. It challenged Beijing directly and caught even European allies off guard. With no united EU front, the Netherlands stood alone. The world braced for China's response. The gauntlet had been thrown. Beijing's response was swift and punishing. China condemned the Dutch move, but its real answer was action immediate export controls targeting Dutch and European tech. The first blow, a total halt to Nexperia chip shipments from China to Europe, since most of Nexperia's chips were finished in China. This move strangled its supply to Europe's auto sector. China escalated further, freezing exports of gallium and germanium, metals essential for advanced electronics. Beijing threatened even tighter controls on rare earths, hitting Europe's green tech ambitions. China had found Europe's pressure points and squeezed hard. The message was clear, challenge us, and your industries will pay. The global supply chain, once a symbol of efficiency, had become a weapon. The impact was immediate and devastating, felt across the globe in ways few could have predicted, especially for the auto industry, which relies on a delicate balance of parts and timing. Modern cars need thousands of chips, each vehicle is a marvel of electronics and engineering. Nexperia supplied the legacy chips for critical systems, powering everything from brakes to sensors. When shipments stopped, just-in-time supply chains collapsed. Production lines in Germany, the US, and beyond, ground to a halt, leaving factories eerily silent. Governments warned of mass furloughs and economic losses. Dealerships faced empty lots, and used car prices began to climb, sometimes reaching record highs. For millions this was no longer a distant dispute, it was a crisis affecting jobs, livelihoods, and daily life. European leaders scrambled to negotiate, seeking urgent solutions, but the damage was already done, and recovery would not be easy. The world saw firsthand how supply chains could be weaponized, changing global perspectives forever. As the crisis deepened, the US and China stepped in. A high-stakes summit in Seoul brought President Trump and President Xi together. After tense negotiations, they announced a one-year truce. China agreed to lift its harshest export controls, resuming chip and rare earth shipments. The US paused new tariffs and extended trade relief for American companies. China pledged to buy more American farm goods and energy. The truce sent markets soaring and allowed factories to restart. The immediate crisis was averted but the solution was temporary. Both sides knew this was only a pause in a much larger rivalry. The world exhaled, but the underlying tensions remained. The truce brought relief, but not resolution. For a moment, the industry exhaled, grateful for a pause in the crisis, yet beneath the surface, anxiety lingered. Everyone knew the underlying issues had not disappeared. The vulnerabilities exposed by the Nexperia crisis remained, casting a long shadow over boardrooms and factory floors alike. Companies scrambled to assess their exposure, realizing just how fragile their supply chains truly were. China's grip on chips and critical minerals was undiminished. The world's dependence on a single source for these vital resources had become painfully clear, and the balance of power was shifting. Western governments realized their economic security was still at risk. Urgent meetings were held, and new strategies debated, as leaders grappled with the reality that their technological future was not entirely in their own hands. Efforts to de-risk began. Billions invested in domestic chip plants and alternative supply chains. New partnerships were forged and ambitious projects announced, all in hopes of regaining some measure of control. But these projects would take years. Dependence on China couldn't be ended overnight. The road to self-sufficiency was long, filled with technical, financial, and political hurdles. The crisis forced a painful reassessment of globalization's true costs. For decades, efficiency and profit had trumped resilience, but now, the risks of that approach were impossible to ignore. The world had dodged a bullet, but the clock was ticking. Every delay increased the risk of another, perhaps even more severe disruption. Could the West build resilient supply chains before the next crisis? The race was on, with innovation, investment, and international cooperation more critical than ever. The Nexperia saga was a warning. In the 21st century, powers measured in chips and minerals, not just armies. Economic security and technological independence had become the new front lines. The search for true technological security had only just begun. The world was entering a new era, where resilience and innovation would decide who leads and who follows.